I have one question about the policing agencies that were there in Uvalde, Texas at Robb Elementary School. My question is, why were the police so docile when it came to going into the school to save the children? And why were they so aggressive with parents that were not going to stand back and let their children be killed? Can you just imagine the horror that those parents experienced? Get to the school, see cops outside, hear shooting inside, but the cops won't go in and won't allow the parents to go in. That is horror. And why would the police go to the extent of tasing parents, handcuffing them? Why didn't they have this same energy going into the school? Thank God for the courage of one female parent, Miss Angeli Gomez, was not going to stand back and allow her child to be killed. She took action. What the policing agencies did to Miss Gomez and the other parents these parents should get together and, and sue these people. They really should. They should sue these people. And the way police keep making excuses for their inaction. You know, I've heard this talk about what well, the police don't really have to engage. With all this, these rules that change as they go along, we're tired of it. And I know these parents are tired of it. And these parents should get together and sue the policing agencies that were involved in that botched. You know what? I really think there's some type of plot. I mean, really I do. I don't trust these people. How do we actually know that the shooter was killed? I mean, they said they find him hiding in some closet. What happened then? Why there was no body shown, anything? So I don't really trust these people and the way that they handled Miss Gomez really makes me not trust them. Now, in this article in the New York Post, it says a Uvalde mom who was handcuffed after urging police to rescue her kids from the deranged gunman who slaughtered 19 children at Robb Elementary claims law enforcement has warned her to stop telling her story. Once the handcuffs were off. Angeli Gomez jumped over the fence and rushed to save her two sons on her own. Gomez claimed she got a call from someone in law enforcement who said if she kept speaking about the botched police response to the massacre, she'd be charged with a probation violation for obstruction of justice. Man, these people. A farm worker, Gomez, had been at the school earlier in the day for a graduation ceremony, then returned to the fields where she works. About 10 minutes later, she received a frantic call from a mother telling her about the shooting. She jumped in her car and sped back to the school. Now, when Ms. Gomez was driving up to the school, she said that she heard gunshots coming from inside. But well, she says, right away as I parked, a U.S. Marshal started coming toward my car, saying that I wasn't allowed to be parked there. And he said, well, we're going to have to arrest you because you are being very uncooperative. Ms. Gomez said, she told him he would have to arrest her and criticized the phalanx of law enforcement standing around. Y'all standing with snipers and y'all far away? I got to go in there, she said, and he immediately put the cuffs on her. Cops from various agencies hailed other parents back 
as they tried to get into the school and begged the officer to do something. After a local officer convinced the marshal to remove the handcuffs, Gomez said she bolted toward the school, jumping the fence to get inside. She went first to her son's classroom near where the fourth graders were attacked, then grabbed her second son from his classroom and ran with them out of the building. A woman with no gun, no backup, no body armor, goes in and does something that police officers with backup, with body armor, with a weapon, refuse to do. After she shared her story with reporters, she got the threatening call, dangling charges that could upend her probation related to charges filed more than a decade ago. But Gomez said the judge overseeing her probation told her she did not face new legal problems and that her bravery would be rewarded with a shortened probation. Now you have to ask yourself, why didn't these different policing agencies make the decision to send a tactical team in? Why did they decide to just sit out there and listen to the gunshots? Now, if Ms. Gomez was able to go inside and save a few children, just imagine if the police that, that were there would, would have went inside, how many lives could they have saved? But they chose to just stand back. Now, why is that? Mrs. Gomez says that they could have done something. Gone through a window, sniped in through a window, I mean something. But nothing was being done. If anything, they were being more aggressive on us parents that were willing to go in there. You know, this whole deal just doesn't smell good. It doesn't smell good, and I don't trust the police and agencies because they always lie. But since this incident right now, right here, people are starting to finally realize how much they lie and how big cowards that they really are. And if you were ready to examine this real closely, it's like the shooter was given help and time to carry out these attacks. Because they had cops there while the shooting was happening and they prevented people from going in. And they wasn't going in. It's like they gave this tight guy enough time to shoot however many people was going to shoot and I don't trust these cops at all because how do we know that the guy was really killed how do we know he just went alright get up on this sheet and lay here we're going to take you out and take you to some other place how do we know that is not what really happened because the police have not been truthful thus far on anything and it's just mighty suspicious and mighty fishy on how they would treat the parents that want to go in and save their child. I would have been one of the parents that would have been arrested and tased and handcuffed because there was no way I would have sat there hearing what's going on inside the school and not making an attempt to go in and save not only my child but the other people that were in the school. But the cops were more aggressive with the people outside than they were when they approached her how we're going to get inside this school to stop this active shooter. Like I said, uh, Miss Gomez, hey, you are one special woman. You are very special. And, uh, my hat's off to you. You should re receive some type of award or something. You should be recognized for your bravery. The bravery of a just an average, everyday citizen, a worker. And you got cops from different policing agencies there that were cowards and said that, oh, maybe they didn't want to go in because they didn't want to get shot. What type of thing was that to say? And you're a police officer. And so now you're backpedaling, trying to find every excuse you can instead of saying, just, hey, what you cops up there and you value should do is just go in on and admit, hey, 
the officers that we had were a bunch of cowards. There's no other way to say it. They should have acted, but they did not act. They stood by idly and watched or listened to this guy kill innocent people. And when I noticed about these shootings lately, it is crappy blue background. Now I'm quite sure that not everyone is taking pictures with this crappy blue background, which makes me think something fishy is going on. See, one of the reasons why I don't really believe this story, I mean, like the way it's happening, is because I know how the police handle black people. And I always say that, hey, if they handled everybody else like they did black people, I mean, a lot of these crimes will be stopped lickety split. I know for a fact that there have been a black person inside of a school shooting children, those cops would have went in. They would have went in and they would have stopped the threat, as they say. Why won't the federal government go in and take over that policing agency up there in Uvalde? Because those cops, are they don't deserve to be cops. They don't deserve to be cops. They are all a bunch of cowards. You know, I've seen some of the cops in the pictures that were there. Fat, out of shape. They shouldn't be police officers. And I, I there's no surprise to me why they didn't engage the shooter. It's scary. You know, if this was some type of movie I was watching, I would say that maybe the police and these shooters were all in on this together, and the government, to help bring about these gun law changes. They allowed it to happen. You know, it's just not a good look for the police up there in Uvalde that you had cops on the scene afraid to go in and you have a woman that goes in and saves the day. You just can't blame this one on guns because the police had guns that they refused to use and a woman with no gun goes in and saves her two children along with the other people that followed. Now Ms. Gomez got a call about the active shooter. When she gets to the school, she hears shooting inside. She sees that there are law enforcement there on the scene. Out of all that time that they dealt with her, handcuffing her, unhandcuffing her, she finally jumps the fence to go inside. How much time elapsed while cops were still standing around? How many lives could have been saved if the cops would have acted when they got there instead of acting after Ms. Gomez acted? With cases like this, you always have to draw your own conclusions because they will never tell the truth. The people that have the truth will not reveal the truth. The truth as to why the cops didn't go in. The truth as to why they prevented parents from going in. The truth as to why we have not seen the dead body of the shooter. Do people remember just maybe a year ago when black people were saying reform the police? Everyone was saying, no, back the blue, back the blue. My, how time brings about a change.